It was in a night of great pleasure, it equal I ne'er saw before. In that stately romantic old building that stands in the heart of Glamour. The heather with rain being well sprinkled, fair luna's light clouded with fog, while the sounds of an adjacent river re echoed o'er my land and bog. Johnny Broderick, who could describe him? An artist, a poet, a scholar, a raconteur. Described by Bishop Cassidy as one of nature's gentlemen. Johnny, now gone to his eternal reward, was full of warmth, kindness and hospitality. Few can equal the genius of Johnny Broderick a self-made poet, quarried among the hills of Derry Brine. He had a great wealth of language, being able to converse with people of all ages and of all walks of life. In fact, those of us who remember him on television will recall how he left his interviewer, Frank Hall, speechless. Through the years, Johnny kept close to nature, the brown earth was his home, the wooded slopes his world. Yet within the confines of those physical boundaries lay an indomitable spirit capable of scaling the dizzy heights of perfection. As he worked with fork, spade or shovel, his spirit, clear as a mountain stream, was a receptacle of the changes of nature around him. Someone has said that folk poetry is the language of the soul. If that is true, then is Johnny's poetry poems of the highest order. For his songs come straight from the soul. They are the outpourings of a simple yet articulate composer. Clear they are, clear as a mountain stream and pure as the driven snow. Grand they are, grand as the Irish race itself. Johnny's talent goes back many moons. Those of us who were young enough and or old enough will remember his composition on the untimely death of Paddy Hogan, our first minister for agriculture on the Bridge of Ockram in 1936. Johnny wrote, a dark cloud is hanging today over Galway. A great light has faded that shone brightly there. Lost to the nation is brave Paddy Hogan, whose death has plunged Aaron in grief and despair. The poem first published in Ormoor's Almanac in 1938 got national acclaim and launched Johnny as one of our great folk poets. Like the great raftery, Johnny has done a great service to his native Derry Brian Balanac Hill. He has recorded in verse the great achievements and tragedies of his era. Possibly his first poem of 1928 was dedicated to a family friend, Michael Gallagher, who died at a very early age. The installation of the electric light in Derry Brine in 1956 was the occasion of another composition. It is fortunate Johnny recorded that poem entitled Lighting Up All the Houses in Old Derry Brine and it was written by himself and John Joe Cardus on a wet day in Derry Brine. He says they employed all the men they could find all around, from Balnick Hill to the cross of Cain's Pound, from Kilbacon to Gort and as far as Crosheen, on the hills around Lot, they are all to be seen. My favourite verse is as follows. It is so reminiscent of Raftery when he praises his birthplace, Kilaidhoin. Rathry says, Kilaidon and Balia 
Avasan Gachnian, Tasmir Sukrivan, is Master Gach Sorts. Is Damage to Mahasu, Igatla Machini, Jimo Hanishim, is Vain Rich O. Johnny Broderick pens his praise thus. Derry Brian's a great place, as the old folks do say, for the people are always so charming and gay. Sure, it is nice in the east, and it's nice in the west, for round Egan's and Max are the spots we like best. In August 1980, bonfires blazed in every village in County Galway. The 57 years of exile for our hurlers had been broken. The bitter disappointments and the sad treks home from Crook Park were at an end. A new era had dawned for the maroon and white. The McCarthy Cup had found a new home by the Corp side. Johnny records the thrill and excitement that pervaded through the hills and valleys of his native Derry Brine with his fine song, Galway's Hurling Heroes. This is just the first verse. The year of 1980 in history shall go down. The bonfires blaze, the banners wave in every Galway town. In every village, young and old are dancing in their glee. Since Galway took the McCarthy Cup, their first since 23. As we chatted on a fine April evening, Johnny recounted the many changes that have taken place since he was a boy. Then in his eighties, his memory was crystal clear and together we recited poems from his vast repertoire. To me, he's a bard of Celtic Ireland. He represents all that is pure and artistic in the dying art of folk poetry. He is a voice from the past, echoing our joys and our sorrows of a passing era, of a world that's here today, gone tomorrow. Johnny's parting word to me concerning our folk poems was, they are going from us. Let us save them before it is too late. And it's not too late yet. Save our folk songs and our folk poetry. And if they live, then surely will our race live.